You are listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall on Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Hey everybody watching on the Shattered Dawn Twitch page, welcome. We're here with uh, Realm of the Mist Entertainment. What is up, guys? I am Chris Ristali. I am the host of Breaking the Fourth Wall, and uh, this is normally my show. Um, <laughs> I got hijacked by uh, Shattered Shattered Ga- uh, Tabletop. Guys, thrilled to have you here, especially because I'm here to interview Mr. David DeSanto. And Mr. Ray Rumsey to talk a little bit about tabletop gaming, and particularly your individual shows like Shattered Dungeons and uh, Chronicles of the Lost Realm. So sit back, relax. If you have any questions, since we are live on uh, uh, Shattered uh, Tabletop's uh, uh, Twitch channel, shoot it in that comment section. I will keep an eye on it, and I will happily uh, relay those questions to the group whenever you guys pop them in guys how you doing tonight great thanks for having us yeah i'm glad to be here very honored Ah, Mm -hmm. excellent well the way we do things here at realm of the misentertainment we're normally an audio podcast so it's really weird to look down at my phone and see me (laughs) (laughs) there so right on but uh first and foremost guys why don't you give a little bit about uh yourselves and the shows that you uh that you host, that you that you uh, game master, DM, uh, however you want to call it. Uh, we'll start with our host, uh, Mr. David DeSanto. Oh, thanks. Uh, I am our arc master, which is Shattered Dawn's version of DM, GM, whatever you want to call it. Um, and our show outlines our own indie RPG called Shattered Dawn. Um, it is a really fast and quick game for those of you who have participated in and or seen it played. Uh, character creation for a level one character literally takes 15 minutes, depending on how fast you read. Um, it's a D100 based system, um, so it's mostly you know odds for the most part. Um, and then uh, we have a very intricate lore penned by Andrew B- Bradfeet, uh, our content director, and. Um, uh, I know it's kind of tough to to see, but in our Arc Master Guide here, literally about this much of the whoops, wrong side. This much of the book is totally lore, um, penned by him, and it's not like, you know, it's not necessarily all skittles and rainbows uh, in terms of the lore. We were actually just talking before we went live about uh, how. The world is kind of Shattered Dawn is very dark, and uh, those watching on stream, there is a map behind us uh, that you can kind of see part of it. Um, and uh, I'm taking up yeah, a huge you're... supply of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're more important than the map right now, so uh, um, don't feed my ego, please. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, as you know, in the chat or Zorro right there. Um, and we, we played it with a couple of people at Ancient City Con last year. We had a, a, a large amount of people come and do play tests. Um, it's, it's really a fun game to just sit down, pick up, and play. Um, it's classless, so you don't have to worry about doing, you know, hey, I'm going to be this. What are you going to be? You can literally make your character as you kind of go, depending on your play style. Um, and in the show, we outline a group of heroes that have stumbled upon one another and have, uh, you know, come to be close-knit individuals trying to solve problems that they're faced with on, uh, constantly. Uh, my favorite episode thus far uh, is when the team stole a dragon. Uh, yeah. I think that's episode eight or nine. But, yeah, it's it's definitely a good watch. Oh, right on. And I, I, I feel stupid because I've been calling it Shattered Tabletop and Shattered Dungeons. It's Shattered Dawn. Shattered Dawn is the the RPG. Okay. Um, Shattered Dungeons is the show, and Shattered Tabletop Games is the company. So all are correct in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Well, I just I just want to make sure I get you know everything correctly as I as I interview here. And yeah, just yeah, no worries. Just, just for clarification for for the realm of the mist audience here, um, this is a game you created. Not this- just myself. 
but yes, it's it's definitely an indie RPG created by me and a team of four other people. Um, over the course of I think two and a half years is uh, the time we took on this thing. So, and that's barring any of the edits that we've made thus far. <laughs> so, <laughs> the PDF if you download through Drive Through RPG today looks fairly different than the one we released uh, two years ago. So, right on. And now uh, Ray. Mr. Ray Rumsey, who uh, was brought to me by a mutual friend of ours that said, hey, he's interested in playing Dungeon Now is COO of the Realm of the Mist spinoff, The Lost Realm, with the flag show being his Dungeons and Dragons adventure, which just completed its first season. And that would be Chronicles of the Lost Realm. So, Ray, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your show. All right. Well, again, thanks for having me. It's it's good to be here <laughs> on uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall. Um, so, yeah, it's Chronicles of the Lost Realm is your uh, fifth edition Dungeons & Dragons game. Um, for those not familiar, it's the most recent edition by Wizard of the, Go- uh, Wizard of the Coast. They kind of simplified things, made it a little quicker, a little faster, um, streamlined yeah, some for stuff. Life. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been I've been DMing for quite a while now. Uh, I would say since probably 1996 or so. So I've had some some experience with it. And when our mutual friend came to us and said, "Hey, I got a group of guys that you know they kind of want to try out some D and D. None of us have really gotten to." really experience it i said oh well i'm gonna put you all put you all through tomb of horrors by gary gygax that sounds like a good time yeah and we we laughed and i laughed and thought about the idea of murdering all the players in the first five minutes of gameplay and i quickly changed my mind and decided i was going to do a homebrew game but i really didn't know what i was going to do um, and then after sitting down and kind of meeting everyone and getting to know their personalities and who they were as players and what they were expecting out of a game, um, Chris here came up with the name of the show, uh, being Chronicles of the Lost Realm. And pretty much all the little scribblings and notes that I had done previously, I ripped out of my notebook, crumpled up and threw away. <laughs> and said, I am building a campaign based around the name of this story. This is too, or the name of this campaign. I, it's too good to pass up. And that's exactly what I did. And like Chris said earlier, we just wrapped on season one, which um, I try to leave every, every session on a cliffhanger. And I think they were all good up until episode 10. That was the best one. I think I literally heard Jaws hit tables. It may have just been dice rolls. I'm not sure. But, (laughs) um, you know, obviously, I'm just a DM running a 5e game. Not as glorious as coming up with a game of my own. But um, definitely the group that I run with, these guys are hilarious. Um, they really get into their characters and they have a group dynamic that's unlike anything I've seen in a while. So it's, it's a good time. Uh, by the way, for those that wish to catch the, the, uh, the season finale on YouTube, it releases at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you finally get episode 10 on YouTube tomorrow morning. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> I've already listened to it a few times on its unlisted version, so. <laughs> I, I, I I won't lie, I've been going through the season again. I'm actually at episode five again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I, I find myself laughing, stepping away from playing the character, which, by the way, for those that don't know, in Chronicles of the Lost Realm, I play Ferrante Thonalus, the Drow Ranger. Um, yeah, I know it's original. Shut up. Um, but, uh, it, and I play the character so intently that when I'm in the show, I don't really think about the, the, the comedy that's going on in it because I'm thinking about what the story race telling and, and the pitfalls and traps that are typical RPGs and how my character will react to it. So it's really fun to go back and, and listen to the show and, and just be somebody listening to the show. And 
even some of the stupid things that come out of my mouth, and I'm more of the straight guy in, in the group of uh, that we call the Stumble Crew, um, I find myself stopping and going, what the hell was that about, you know? <laughs> and I'm just curious, as, you know, as a, as a group question to you guys, uh, based off of that, have you ever sat back, listened to some of your own shows, your own, your own uh, sessions, and just as an observer kick back and say, you know what? that was pretty cool or wow that was uh, that was cringy <laughs> or you know how however you however reaction or response you would do it as if you were one of the audience members yeah, yeah we um uh, for reference or zostro chronicles of the lost realm is the their tabletop playthrough show um just to to hit on our our twitch chat right now um, <laughs> almost every week we, I try and release our episodes to iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, on Wednesday. Um, we, we record Tuesday nights, obviously at nine 30 Eastern. Um, typically we'll go till 1130 or midnight, uh, and then we'll call it. But, but typically what I do is I wake up in the morning, uh, I really want to sing the Kesha lyrics, but I'm not going to, <laughs> uh, then um, like P. Diddy. <laughs> exactly we uh, are, are uh, I, I kind of do whatever minimal edits need to be done um, and then I go to uh, I upload it and by the time I'm heading to work it's already on iTunes or Spotify and so what I'll do for the re- the next two days or so depending on time traveled etc is I'll just listen to the episode and primarily for quality control does it sound all right um is there anything i need to edit out stuff like that for the most part we don't uh, i like to do as little edits as excuse me as possible um yeah but after (laughs) our show wraps basically tuesday night uh there's a whole segment where we'll you know take questions from the chat or talk about whatever or like oh man i can't believe you did this during that part um you know, we'll kind of rehash it a little bit before calling it a night. Um, and those uh, for uh, subscribers on our Twitch channel, or, yeah, Twitch channel, um, those unedited episodes are available to subscribers. So you can go and check those out. Some of them get pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but listening back to episodes, the greatest thing, in my opinion, is hearing the cast get into it or, or the the players who are playing. Um, our crew consists of uh, Jay Crutchfield 12. Um, he's a, a streamer as well. Um, he plays the character Reg. And um, he's played a handful of tabletop role playing games before. He's DM'd a couple of ses- sessions of 5e. And then he's also arc mastered a couple sessions of uh, Shattered Dawn um, for convention goers at Ancient City Con last year specifically. And so he kind of got thrown in on the deep end. And then we also have Caden, uh, who is played by uh, one of our friends, Dion. Um, and he, is in, he used to play a, AD&D all the time, um, way back when. Uh, and we kind of threw him in as well, like, hey, we know you've streamed before. Um, we know he's been to a couple of our playtests when we were doing our Kickstarter. Uh and we just kind of tapped him and said, "Hey, do you are you interested?" And he he said yes. And then um, trying to round out our show, we we tapped a a, a friend of ours named Lauren to uh, jump in, and she's never played a tabletop role playing game bef- like in serious ways before. She she's uh, sat down for a couple D and D sessions, but for the most part, she hasn't delved into rules or anything like that she's just been like oh this is fun (laughs) and so to hear all of them all of those three people specifically getting into the game and really trying to hone their characters and what they're doing and do voices and and react to situations is awesome um for the character mr business uh ed who plays mr business who is uh dead rest in peace mr business (laughs) uh uh, business time in the chat, guys. Uh, he, uh, him, and I have been playing role playing games for t- almost just over ten years together, um, on and off. We, we he played my first ever attempt at a at a role playing game, self made. It was uh, like a sci fi type of thing. It was fun. Um, 
we used to have a group in college that we played two nights a week for, you know, four to six hours. That was just ridiculous, but it was so much fun. And so uh, I called him uh, three months ago now and was basically like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. You want in? He's responding with, yeah, I actually, uh, I've been thinking about doing the same thing. So it was like, perfect. Um, and so he should be Edward, not Mr. Business. Mr. Business is dead, obviously. But Edward should be back on our show in the next couple of weeks. Um, he's had a, a work thing come up, so he can't. Uh, hasn't been able to join us for a month, but he'll be back. Oh, good, good, so. good. Uh, just real quick before Ray gives his response um, to uh, Orzorso. H- how do you say his name? I'm sorry. I, I butchered it, I know. No, that's fine. Orzostro is how I've been saying it. But you can correct us if you would like. Just Orzo. spell it phonetically in the chat. I'll just, you know what? I'll just call, I'll call you Orzo. Orzo would like, uh, may have to join our next campaign in Chronicles of Lost Realm, he is saying in the chat. So, uh, Orzo, I'm going to say it's directly to you. Get in contact with Ray. Uh, he'll let you know at the end of the show where you can reach him. And, uh, if you really want in the show, he could pretty much write you, uh, write you in, get your character set up, so that way when we start season two, you could join in. So. Oh, absolutely! I'm I'm always looking in for uh, added guests and whatnot, and anybody that's never even played it before. But um, you know, if you got a a special talent for voice acting, come on in. I <laughs> I would love to have more voice actors. <laughs> now. It, when I join one of your guys as a guest spot, I already have my character archetyped out. Um, I'm going to be a llama druid who shape changes into a human named Kuzco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we won't get sued by Disney for that one. Uh, I'll I'll change the name. It'll be a weird spelling. Phonetically, it'll sound the same though. <laughs> there you go. Kuzco's. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, Kuzco's. Kuzco's. No, that, that's good. Like. You know, and I'm all about that. Uh, we kind of touched on it a little bit off off air. Um, when it comes to my DMing style, I do kind of follow the books. I, I follow most of the generalized rules, but I'm a very the rule is cool kind of thing. And if you do something that's pretty dang phenomenal, I'll bend or fudge rules to make that happen. You know, if you want to go back flipping through combat singing, I'm a modern major general, I'm going to have you roll an acrobatics and a performance, and we're going to see how this plays out. Um, <laughs> you know, but I'm all about that. So a, a shape-shifting llama that does things backwards, that, that would be priceless. <laughs> I think I would be pretty much on board with that, especially since they... The last druid they encountered, it things didn't go well. So no spoiler, all, no spoiler. That's all I'm saying about that, I'm just you're gonna have to listen. I, I will say this much without without spoiler. After all the the crap that went on in ep- episode nine to even allow this uh, druid to join the party, <laughs> <laughs> episode ten was not kind. <laughs> I'll just make but, sure it's literally there for the one shot. So it'll <laughs> die at the end. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, that that's what I was going to say as well is, um, you know, if anybody just wants to jump on board for just one episode, just try it out. If there's anybody out there that would like to do more of a collaborative effort between our shows, that kind of thing, I, I'm all about one shots. I can, I can write you in and I can write you back out after one session. That's, not an issue at all. If you want to stick around and be a recurring character, I got lots of cities your character can live in and jump in whenever you want. Ooh, um, I just had so. I just had a very dangerous thought, uh, Ray. Um, in in your game in Chronicles of the Lost Realm, uh, it's really like it's almost, for lack of a better term, it's almost like Marvel's multiverse or or DC's uh, uh, Infinite Earth, if you will, where where there's so many different realms that intertwine and, and interweave with each other. That's how we wound up in the lost realm. How cool would it be? And how open would you be Dave to have the hashtag stumble crew wind up falling into your guys's realm? 
<laughs> transfer over of characters and personalities. <laughs> Even if it was a one-off, like, how the hell we get here? Like a cameo. <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of, one of the things I'm I'm very careful about, and Andrew and I spoke about this a while back, um, is trying to make sure that the lore is very self-contained and serious in and of itself. Um, so I, I totally think characters... Uh, making appearances in uh, our show, totally fine. Um, I, I hesitate the multiverse thing because the multiverse is not part of our uh, our game. Well, uh, right. Um, I use those as uh, examples. It wasn't necessarily the multiverse. It was just, uh, for lack of a better term, gateways into other realms that exist in, in mm-hmm. our thing that we could always accidentally stumble in and, you know, wind up meeting you guys. I'm yeah, sure. I, I'm I sure would... Hillman would love to meet the late Mister <laughs> Business. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> I could bring him back. <laughs> yeah, I I think there are creative ways to make stuff happen. Definitely. So. <laughs> yeah. So. So one of the things for season two to kind of look out for is uh, recently I was down in um, Raleigh at Galaxy Con, and I don't know if any of our listeners have been or or went there but there was an amazing amount of people there and the ones that i kind of stuck to the most and got the most value out of i think was uh the four guest people um from uh dragon ball z and i won't use any names or anything like that but uh they all did some audio clips for chronicles that we're gonna find a way to kind of add into our intro i think um we're we're really not quite sure what we're going to do with that but anyway um i got to hang out with them a lot after their panels and we kind of talk candidly without all the fans around at the tables like we actually were away from everybody talking and they gave me an incredible amount of advice as to how to become a better voice actor myself so after that long little explanation there, look out for season two. I'm going to be doing um, a lot more voices and kind of getting a lot more weird with some of the characters, the NPCs that, that appear in the show. Mm-hmm. So, so gotta, let me ask you. Uh, before you uh, do, i got to say it. Uh, go for it. I'm sitting here laughing. Jam 5 Princess is is vicious <laughs> I, that's someone that i uh, i know in uh non-twitch land but thank you by the way jam five princess for subscribing you're awesome uh the braille i was writing as you so lovingly stated said jam five pr- princess sucks and i crossed out sucks because you subscribed um, <laughs> so uh that's all it takes guys one subscription and i i un uh mark your name from sucking to not sucking so there you go <laughs> uh, real or Zostro, quick, I can I can send your information their information to you on a Discord. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um. So, uh, Ray, one thing I wanted to ask you: you and I have kind of talked on and off uh, for the past week. I feel like about voice acting and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. What are some of the voices that you love to do? Ah. Uh, well, um, no, that I really, over, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. <laughs> one, one of my voices that I really love to do, and it drives people crazy. They can only handle a little bit of him at a time. Is um, my quote unquote redneck voice? Um, he sounds very similar to um, a certain character from Borderlands. And I do it particularly well, almost too well, and I think it really drives people crazy when I get on a tangent with them, because I've used them in D&D campaigns before, and my players literally spend as little time talking to him as possible. (laughs) Because not only does he have this crazy, outlandish, just redneck accent, he's also dumb as a rock. (laughs) So they they really don't like talking to him, but I like to make him a predominant NPC. Um, But I would say probably that one's my favorite to do. My least favorite, any female voice. Oh, yeah. 
I totally know that feel. There was uh, an episode a couple episodes ago where I had to do a female voice, and I I was at a loss. Um, and so I, I tried to practice something, but it, it didn't really work out. Um, <laughs> or, so for those of you listening, uh, uh, Orzostra just has a, a great question. Would you like to read the question, friend? I shall do so. I am not a shy person by any means, but I find myself feeling silly when I try to do voices in the group. Any advice to get over that? Actually, I wouldn't mind hearing that myself because uh, Ferran has my voice because I'm not good at voices either. <laughs> it, that, so that question um, is really awesome because a lot of people feel that way. That's not something oh, that is unique to anybody. Everybody that I've ever played with, I, I'm very much someone who likes to invite people to play role-playing games with me. Um, every time that I've done a voice for a character um i really just kind of zone out i i think like you know this is either going to be hilarious or it's going to be actually kind of relevant and so um on our show there's a dragon the uh, referenced earlier that the the uh, team has rescued i'll say and kidnapped i had to yeah yeah, agree to to disagree you know it depends um (laughs) but i had to figure out how to do a dragon voice and honestly i did some research on okay what's what are some movies or films or um you know podcasts where there is a dragon what does they what do they sound like (laughs) uh and most of them do yeah (laughs) yeah most of them do sean connery some do like the the just really almost snake like um (laughs) And someone, I read something somewhere where uh, do your best Yoda impression and then take it down two octaves. And yeah. so it was like, mm, okay, mm, okay. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, I'm in the ballpark now. Now I know what's yeah. doing. But when you're doing voices, for me at least, it's important to think that you're telling a story. Just like with listening to an audiobook when people are doing voices or different people are interacting there or conveying a story to you it helps to differentiate the characters especially as someone who's running a game so you have instances where you know we've done episodes where there are several different um npcs non-player characters that people are interacting with and they all have to do the one voice so easy on the players but the the guy running the show or or gal has to give this person some personality. And mm-hmm. so the easiest way to do that is giving them a different voice. Um, it, do you make the voice when you're making the character or just on the fly? For me, it's just on the fly. Ray, oh, yeah. w- would you like to chime in on that? No, I abs- I agree. I think... So w- how I kind of think about it and get over it, if you will, is... Um, I kind of remind myself that there's not a single person in the the world that hasn't danced in their underwear, that hasn't made some kind of social faux pas, or doesn't sing in the shower. You know, we we all have our little things that we do. We're we're all a little silly. There's nobody in the world that can say they're serious 100% of the time. Everybody's silly at some point in their life. I embrace it. I want to be silly and that reflects in my npcs and my characters um i you know to the to answer the most recent question i come up with a voice for myself like if i'm playing which is rarely but when i do play when i'm creating the character that's when i kind of formulate a personality where did this guy come from where is he going where do i see the overall person as a whole and i create the character as i create like i create the voice while i create the character now as the dm yeah that's all on the fly you know if it's for instance with chronicles these guys were partied up with there was a a a druid who was very young so i had to try and do a voice for that and then they also partied up with a dragonborn and at one point i had you trial and error the Dragonborn. She's I had, did. She's had a couple different voices until you finally settled. Yeah, which, you know, you look at any 
any cartoon. Look at The Simpsons. Look at Family Guy. Season one compared to season two, their voices just completely change. So don't feel like the first voice you do is the one you have to stick with. You can absolutely change it at any time. This is your character. Mm -hmm. I I think something, too, to keep in mind when you're doing voices, um, most of us are not voice actors. Right. You don't expect someone to have the wide variety of voices available to you. Um, You know, (laughs) yeah, two different mix. Um, The wide variety of voices available to you if you were a voice actor. And a lot of those people have been doing voices for years and years and years they have different things they've studied they put the time in to develop those voices oh yeah Um, for a lot of games especially when you're running it with your friends you're there to have a good time i don't think that necessarily committing to like oh i'm gonna do you know professional level voice acting is really necessary or appropriate i think it's just as long as you're um talking from the character's point of view and, you mm-hmm. know that gets the message across. I right. listen to. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone knows Dungeons and Randomness. Does that ring a bell to anybody? Sounds I familiar. unfortunately, I unfortunately have not heard of that one. So, when we were beginning the process of getting the show running, um, I was doing a lot of research into other live play podcasts and shows, um, and that's when I stumbled upon because they do kind of the same. Uh, if you can put shows into models, they do a model similar to the ones I wanted to try and do. Um, thanks, Jam Five. No one listens to oh, man. <laughs> no, um, but uh, they run it using, uh, you know, voice capture, audio capture, all that fun stuff. But they're not in the same room, so they run it through uh, an app where they do virtual tabletop, and then they have you know audio capture and it's it's great um and they're fairly large for their uh, they they did a kickstarter that raised 50 grand i think recent this year um wow. or just over actually no i think it was like 80 regardless um their arc mass their their dm doesn't really do a whole bunch of voices it's just different tonalities of his own voice and you know, like yeah. when he's voicing a female, he'll he'll talk in a higher register, but it's still his voice. It's not like he's trying to recreate um, a female voice from the ground up. Right. And so, uh, as long as you're committed to what you're doing and you're there to have fun and enjoy it, then you know that's the point. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's not like everyone's playing these games to um, to become voice actors. They're playing the games to play the games and have that right. community and interact with other people. But to be, yeah. to be fair, too, like, um, if, if I may interject, even though I'm a one-note voice person anyway, um, I think I think part of it that's kind of different for, like, you guys as opposed to your typical uh, role player, not everybody's doing a podcast or audio show or something of that nature. Normally, they're in their own little dwellings surrounded at a, at a table with their friends or or at best at at a uh, game game store you know that allows dungeons and dragons or, or something of that nature that's a little bit more relaxed environment where you can really practice it i think part of a lot of people's shyness when it comes to things like you you do and we do is that your voice is being heard by everybody who clicks on the video or clicks on the audio file and that yeah. I, I could definitely see that being part of the reason why a lot of butt butt cheeks clench when it's like, oh god, can I do an alternate voice? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you know, if you're playing a game and you're with your friends, or even if you're not, if you're at a game store with a whole bunch of complete strangers doing Adventures League or whatever you might be doing. Um, Nobody says you have to voice act. Nobody says you have to create a character as long as you're having fun. And ultimately, that's what it is. The game, it's a game to have fun. And let's face it, the only person who can be Matt Mercer is Matt Mercer. None of us, you know, we who, could strive to that? achieve that. What's that? Who, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I was like, uh huh, yeah, because you don't know who that is. I, I, I'm not kidding because, uh, uh-huh. you know, Matt Mercer. Uh, no disrespect to him; he's a decent DM and definitely good at voice acting. But uh, 
I think as far as like you know people that I've actually watched DM you know in shows that I've told you before my favorite uh, uh, show to watch besides our own is uh, Dice Camera Action. I love Chris Perkins as a DM. Oh yeah, Chris Perkins was great, and he did voices as well. Um, but you know his were just off the wall funny you know <laughs> uh when he did acquisitions inc and he had you know a bunch of celebrities on there that was good fun for me to watch i had a real good time watching that green um, flame <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's the thing just go out there and have fun really if you do a crazy voice sure why not i mean some people might laugh but some people might be like, you know what? That's a really cool voice. Don't don't be afraid to try it. If it don't work, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't work. Well, you know what? I I think I think we can expand on this real quick. Uh, we're talking about voices. Let, let's put you guys on the spot. Ray, I'm not going to give you a choice like I'm about to give Dave here. Dave, Dave, you choose one of the best voices that you 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 do on the show, on your show. Uh, having a conversation with Nua. <laughs> with Nua, Nua the Dragonborn. <laughs> Let's put you guys on the spot and show them that it's, it's just let it go. So, Orzostro, to to answer your question, what it feels like when you have to do a voice in public is how Ray and I are feeling right now, being put on the spot without much context. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'll I'll play DM for a second. You guys are sitting in a tavern together. Um, wind up. The the dragonborn Nua winds up knocking into you and spilling your drink. Now, since I don't know your character and and the voice you're about to portray, I'll let you go from there. But that's the, that's the setup is that this big hulking female dragonborn just knocked over your your favorite mug of mead. <laughs> well, that was my favorite mug of mead. What were you doing? You need to look where you're going. <laughs> Puny mortal, why are you in my way? I was literally just standing here. Stand elsewhere, scaleless one. Kevin, attack! Why, yes, I would love to attack this thing. <laughs> oh wait, hold on now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so one of the things I was going to bring up with about um, getting put on the spot and whatnot, uh, a, a few weeks ago I was up at, at our local mall and a guy was trying to get a group together and everything, and I kind of helped him do that. And we had six players and then him DMing, and none of us had ever met each other before. Like, we didn't even talk on Facebook. This was, like, session one. And I was playing your typical paladin. Shiny armor, fur cloak, didn't like to get dirty, but had no issues fighting honorably in combat. So we were escorting a wagon through the woods, trying to get to this keep that we were going to clear of hobgoblins, yada, yada, yada. We ended up getting in a fight with some cats. Now, the way this store is set up, our gaming table was towards the back of this room, and then in the front of the room, there was multiple smaller tables set up that there was probably 20, 25 people all playing Magic the Gathering. Okay. And they were being they were being semi-quiet and, you know, kind of just doing their thing. We were doing our thing. <laughs> Everybody was fine. Well, as the, the paladin, I was doing a kind of a boisterous, you know, nightly voice, but I hadn't had the chance to speak yet. Mm -hmm. My character had not spoken a word in the half hour we had been playing. And we got into this fight, some kind of crazy cat creatures that could peel back their face and it caused fear. Well, you know, standard D and D, right? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> so, um, my character ended up getting, uh, a 19 on my roll, I rolled my damage, and it was enough to actually outright kill it in one swing of my, my longsword. So I said, this is the perfect opportunity to show like who my character is. So after killing this c cat creature, 
me, myself, immediately leaned back in my chair and went, ha, ha, ha. All of the Magic players went dead silent and were looking directly at our table. And I just waved. Like, hey, yeah, that was me. What are you going to do about it? And they went back to their game, and we went back to ours, and they said, oh, my God, you're that kind of paladin. And from there, it was just hilarity ever since. Well, you Your know, catchphrase was, oh, <laughs> rub-a-dub-dub. Right. <laughs> well, see, see, you got a, you got a point there because I was just I was literally sitting here thinking about it while you were talking, and 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 you were put on the spot of doing that voice, and then all of a sudden, like everybody looks at you, you know, from from around the room that had nothing to do with the game because it's like, oh my god, he, he you know, he loud and boisterous or whatever, and it's kind of weird because uh, for a while, uh, Realm of the Mist was doing some video game let's plays, and one of the let's plays I I was running was. Uh, older Final Fantasies. And, you know, if you remember the older Final Fantasies, they didn't have voice acting. So, I, like, I was running a Final Fantasy IX campaign, and uh, I had to act out the characters, and of course I gave a voice very similar to, to what Ray did to one of the characters, Steiner. But one of the secondary characters, like this big, beefy dude that's kind of orcish looking, I thought I'm this type of voice. <laughs> and I, I fe- for me, it felt easier because nobody sees me. They're they're paying attention to the game. They're not paying attention to me. So I, I guess it's almost like being in an audio booth. Yeah. Where I, I felt more comfortable doing silly voices like this because nobody's looking at me. Right. Exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and that that's a thing to remember too. If you're doing this on a podcast or something like that, people aren't aren't going to see you. So unless you're using video, in which case, well, Oh God, I just realized I'm on camera right now doing that voice. (laughs) (laughs) That's all good. And that's part of what I experience every week right there. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go. uh, There we go. Uh, Um, it's uh, one of the things I will say on that. Um, and this touches on a larger point that has been a recurring theme in, uh, my life, at least, um, the people who are looking over and judging you, or or you feel like they're judging you rather for doing a voice or being immersed in a game, something like that. That's not out of, uh, Oh, I can't believe they were doing that or, or some negative thing. That's, their own personal um, uh, inner conflict that they're that they're dealing with. Um, a lot of times when people come over after you know a game where I I have done some weird voices or been able to just unabashedly act out a scene or something. Not that I'm an actor at all, but they see that and they're they're kind of put off on it because they wish they could be kind of more. Um, at home in their own skin doing the things that they enjoy. And a lot of times I've had people come up to me like, Hey, what are you guys doing after the fact? Um, specifically at conventions and stuff when we're doing playthroughs or play tests and I'm voicing a character or I'm just literally explaining in, uh, you know, uh, as much detail as possible with as much embellishment as possible. Uh, what the, the players are facing that usually draws interest and not necessarily like, Oh, I can't believe they're doing that. They legitimately like, Oh man, they, these guys are pretty free in what they're doing. I want to check it out. Um, and so that's another thing I would, I would say when playing any game that you feel, um, people might not agree with or judge you for playing specifically tabletop role playing games. It's easy for people to like judge you. Oh, you play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, you play this, that and the other. Um, it's a freeing experience. It really is where you get to explore things and kind of escape and not have to deal with the immediate uh, challenges you're facing in life and can disconnect and deal with them in a different way. Um, And a lot of people don't quite understand that. And when they do see that happening, it's easy to just write it off rather than embrace that. And I've been really happy to see that a lot of mainstream stuff now like critical role uh like um 
you know, that Dragon Show and a couple others where they're live playing D&D and people are talking about more, talking about tabletop RPGs, understand what live play Twitch sessions, stuff like that are. Um, you know, you get people that really don't understand it, but they respect it now. Um, and they understand at, at least what the purpose is, not necessarily what the game is. And that is something that's super important um, as human beings to be in that community with one another, to seek out more than just, you know, sitting at, at home by ourselves, but wanting relationships where we can um, build characters and build things and have those shared experiences with people so that we aren't in a vacuum of our own design, that we are interacting with others and able to enjoy uh, life and be there for others to help them through things they may be experiencing. And that's the thing that I love most about tabletop role-playing games is it's all of that rolled into one thing, <laughs> you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. That was something I was going to say is, uh, is, uh, I'm an, I'm an older, pro. I don't know how old you are. I know, I know Ray's kind of up there, but not there with me. I'm, I'm 42 years old. I remember when Dungeons and Dragons was still very, very, taboo you know the, the devil worship mm. and satanic and and it's really freeing to see the tabletop gaming in general not just dungeons and dragons but in general has, has become a lot more mainstream since since geek culture or nerd culture has really been embraced and that's why i enjoy shows so much like uh like stranger things when they portray the the, the culture and that time frame, that's really how it was. You were ostracized. Like, I remember being mm -hmm. in high school, and my friends would, on a Friday night, ask me where I'm going and what I'm doing. And I told them, you know, I'm going to see my girl or something like that. I didn't have a girlfriend, man. I was going to play d and I, <laughs> I just didn't want my cool friends to know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's such a different culture now that people, like you said, people may not play it. They may not understand the concept of the games of it, but they understand why it's appealing to people. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. truth be told, season three, spoiler alert, um, I feel like uh, uh, Will all the time. I'm like, hey, guys, you want to play D&D? &D? Guys, can we just can we play can we play Shatter Dawn? Guys, I just right. want to play. Please. I just want to play. Come on. <laughs> Guys, stop working so much. Like, why are you got an adult? Like, dang. Well, let me let me let me throw another question out at you guys here, since I'm supposed to be interviewing you. Uh, you're you're both uh, obviously uh, game masters for your particular games, uh, running on Twitch, running on Roll Twenty, running on YouTube, whatever the whatever the case may be. Do you ever find yourself, and if so, how do you combat? Not so much worry being a film director and worrying about how the show is being perceived to people and separate that from the fact that you're running a game and you're trying to have fun. Like what are your mm -hmm. secrets of, of separating the, the, the business aspect of running a show or podcast with the fun aspect of I'm running a game and we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. Right. Why don't you take that one first? Uh, well, um, for me anyway, uh, I kind of feel like it's not something to, that can be separated. Um, maybe I should start looking at it that way. Um, but <laughs> no, th like when I'm, when I'm DMing, uh, particularly let's say with Chronicles and we're recording and everything, the way I'm kind of thinking about it is I need to present the information that I have in the most creative and fun way possible for you guys so that you will in return answer with creative and fun ways. And I think that just that in itself is going to create something that listeners are going to enjoy. And so it just, it kind of all works together. I think. For, for shattered dungeons, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, for, uh, I'd say the better part of six years now, um, I've been either running or hosting games on Roll20 for some time, uh, like a significant portion of that six-year time frame. Um, some weekly, some not so weekly. Uh, and I find that the way we kind of designed our show, where we have an announcements basically up front, 
Um, and then we go from announcements basically to an intro video, and then we're at the game table, the virtual tabletop through Roll20. And that um, in and of itself is super freeing because at that point I'm not trying to click on my little buttons to like, all right, now we're going to this part of the show, now we're going to that part of the show. At that point I'm just playing the same game that I've been playing with or the same style of play that I've been playing for you know six plus years. So it, it comes very natural. And honestly, I have a monitor kind of set up right above where my camera is, where I can monitor things like, you know, uh, chat and stream, blah, blah, blah. And usually I read my notes from that monitor um, for the, the, the session we're playing. And there's always going to be a little bit of production when you're producing a show, period. Um, thankfully, I have a background in that. But the the most important thing is that you're letting people in on an organic experience. It's not like you're, you've rehearsed this stuff. It's not like you're, you know, just saying your lines for that perfect recording. You're legitimately capturing an intimate improv session, basically. Um, right. And the reason most live play shows have, a following is because of that in and of itself. It's not an overproduced thing. You're watching people legitimately play a game that they enjoy, and people generally like that and want to be a part of that. I know for me, I listen to a lot of live play podcasts because it's fun for me. I like hearing the different stories and different play styles and getting different character ideas and things like that for, for our own sessions based on what some other people may have thought of in the moment. Um, and so... it. I, it, Ray's right. There's not going to be a disconnect where you can completely step out, but there's ways to minimize your show uh, um, from a content and branding standpoint, even from a logistical standpoint, so that you're not having to take away from your content to make it happen. If that makes sense, so. that makes yep. perfect sense. Uh, all right, let me. I got to. I got to muscle through some of the last questions I had here. Uh, yep. We're we're coming up on the one hour mark here. Um, all right, so definitely want what got you into RPGing, uh, tabletop gameplay. What was what was the first thing you played? Uh, what endeared you to it and made you choose to to want to take it down this path later on in life, i.e., broadcasting and and live performances. Mm. Um, but what started it all is basically the main question. Uh, my dad. Pl- played uh D and D growing up. Uh and I think when I turned eleven, uh he sat all of us down, me and my brothers, and DM'd a session for us uh that was based on the A D and D book cover. Uh for I think it I can't remember if it was Player's Guide or Dungeon Master Guide, but uh I re- he re- explained the whole concept to us. And we made our characters, and we were in it. And I remember, you know, drawing hand-drawn maps of the dr- dungeon we were exploring for reference <laughs> later, and really getting into it. And uh, that kind of just expounded upon itself. Uh, I found friends who liked to play, and we would play whenever we could. And um, my brothers and I would play periodically, and that was a staple for me is having those weekly or bi-weekly sessions where you're getting together with your friends and experiencing that. We, Like I said earlier, we were playing two nights a week in college for four to six hours, and that was amazing. It was such a fun time um, because you built relationships and developed stories and things like that. And through, for us, we started our show based off the complete inability to continue to run the company the way we'd been running it. Um, we got to a point where we were doing play tests every month and logistically it was a nightmare uh, trying to get ourselves and volunteers with all the life that was happening. I had just had our second child or my wife had had our second child um, and uh, we got in a car. Well, I got in a car crash on the way to a play test and realized at that moment that I couldn't kind of keep doing things the way things had been going. Um, and so I took about six months off and said, you know, uh, I'm going to give this one last shot. If in three months uh, our show, the the show isn't, you know, relatively self-sufficient or there isn't really a following to speak of or anything like that, then I'll just pull the plug and call it quits and that'll be the end of it. Um, and that didn't happen. 
So here we are. <laughs> Ray? That's awesome. Um, so I was about the same age, actually, and um, I was at a friend's house having a, a sleepover, and he said, well, you, you can go ahead and play on the Nintendo. Uh, I got to build a character. I was like, all right, I don't know what the heck that means, but <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll play Mario. It'll be my turn. So I'm sitting there playing, and I hear him leafing through the books and everything, and he's, hmm, ha, oh, okay, you know, doing all those noises in the background. So I kind of turned, looked, and I, I saw those pictures of the first edition books, you know, just pencils. <laughs> Somebody drew pictures with pencils. And I said, well, that, that looks kind of cool. What's that? And that was it. That, that was the beginning of the end. He <laughs> explained everything to me, and we created a character. And much like people experience these days, um, second edition had just come out. But we were all so young that we didn't have a income to speak of. So we couldn't go run out and buy all the second edition books. So we were still playing off of first edition. And, I mean, it, it was the time of my life. I learned all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, the guy that was running the campaign for us, he was a bit older, but his son was our friend. And he had been playing this game since, you know, the, the board game version. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he was just our DM. And we all kind of grew up together with him DMing us. And we kind of had this idea of what the game should be. So I sat down and I told my mom that I really wanted these second edition books, but she wasn't going to go run out and buy them for me. So she sat down with her printer. whopping fourteen ninety nine, Right. <laughs> well, she sat down with her printer and said, this will be much cheaper and printed me all three books. And I don't know if you can imagine what a printed DMG or players. I mean, this thing looked like an encyclopedia. It was that thick. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we used. And man, second edition changed our lives. And I was just on it from then that point on. I never, I never got into anything else until much later. And then I started expanding into... Vampire the Masquerade and uh, Star Wars Saga Edition, Star Trek, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah. So the next question is really: Is it is Thacko really that bad? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those for those that are younger that don't understand, Thacko is to hit armor class zero. That used to be the uh, the the mathematical equation of hitting armor classes in second edition D and D, where instead of the higher your, your your the number of your armor class, the better your armored, the lower your armor class was, the better your armor was. So if you had a negative two armor and you needed to roll a five to hit a, a zero uh, zero armor class, you needed a seven to hit the negative two armor class. I never understood why that was so hard for anybody to understand, but <laughs> whatever it's, it, you know, it math, mathematics, it's a part of the game guys. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, one of the last questions here is kind of a uh, proposal question. Realm of the Mist itself and, and the lost realm subsequently has joined up with uh, Twitch's uh, extra life program. Mm hmm. And that is coming up pretty soon. I don't remember the exact date where you're supposed to broadcast for 24 hours to raise money for veritable charities. Rona Mist obviously being a Philadelphia-based uh, company, even though our talent and our shows come from all over the United States. Ray himself is in, in New York, as an example. Um, so the company has been sponsoring uh, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> when this twenty-four hour broadcast comes on, one I would love to see Chronicles of the Lost Realm perform. Maybe not twenty-four hours, but I'd love to see them perform. 
But also, I'd like to propose that maybe uh, Shattered Dawn might make a special appearance on the Realm of the Mist channel to help out with that cause. Yeah, um, depends on the timing. I know we've talked about timing a lot in our Facebook messages, but um, we're actually doing a, an Extra Life sponsored thing uh, here in Jacksonville with our local community. Um uh, we're going to be doing some demos of our prototype board games, and then uh, some Shattered Dawn will be available as well. Um, that's that. What I'm talking about is August 24th at uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. If more information will be out on that as I get it. Um, but yeah, depending on date, time, all that, I mean, I'm totally open to that. We could definitely uh, shoot a one-shot uh, during that time frame. Absolutely. I'd, I'd be honored to have you guys there. Uh, all right, guys. Well, we reached that point of the show where we start talking about where you can find us and everything else. So uh, uh, I'm going to start with Ray because now we go back into this is, uh, you know, Shattered Dungeons Twitch channel. So we can let them close out, <laughs> close a, out that portion. It's a channel for all. It's a channel yeah. for all. But <laughs> right. uh, Ray, why don't you tell them where they can find you, where they can find Chronicles of the Lost Realm, and how they can contact you if they'd like to be a part of Chronicles of the Lost Realm. All right, so I am Ray. I'm the Chronicler in Chronicles of the Lost Realm. Um, I can be found on Facebook under uh, Ray Ray. It might be a little hard to find. But if you search for Chronicles of the Lost Realm and send uh, post something up on there, I am very quick to respond to those. Uh, so anybody looking for a guest spot, you can do that. We are also on Instagram under Chronicles of the Lost Realm. I'm good. I, I tagged you the right way earlier than in, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, for for myself, normally because of uh, being the host of the Breaking the Fourth Wall, I usually go last. But again, Twitch channel belongs to uh, Shattered Dungeon, so I'm letting them close it out. You can oh, find no, me no, no. <laughs> here. Here, let you you close it out. You're still hosting the show. I just happen to be live streaming it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, shattered tabletop games. Check us out on twitch.com. No, twitch.tv. Sorry, slash shattered tabletop games. Uh, you can also check out shatteredtabletopgames.com, and we're on most social media as Shattered Dawn or Shattered Tabletop Games. Uh, and then download our podcast on iTunes, on Spotify, YouTube, etc. Wherever you download podcasts, check out Shattered Dungeons. I actually found you guys on Podcast Attic. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we are uh, the the company who hosts us. We have a plan with um, basically sends it everywhere. So I mean, I've accidentally found us on really obscure podcast hosting sites, just like trying to Google search our own stuff because I do that because <laughs> I'm weird. That, so. that, that's the same with us. We use we use Anchor for the audio for uh, version of the show, and mm -hmm. uh, it sends us out to about eight or nine different uh, 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 podcast providers. So, you know, like I, that's why I shortened it down to you can find me anywhere Realm of the Mist Entertainment is presented, whether here on YouTube or wherever quality podcasts are heard. Because mm -hmm. it just I tried to read them out before, and it's just like. Um, yeah, Breaker and Castbox and iTunes and Spotify and yeah, it's too many of them. Just wherever, you, just type in Realm of the Mist, you'll find us. <laughs> <There> you, <go. laughs> you know, which by the way, that's that's the outro. You can find me on here on Breaking the Fourth Wall. You can find me on Chronicles of the Lost Realm playing Ferran Take Thonalus. Uh, you can find me on any of the Realm of the Mist Entertainment shows. Just uh, look us up on YouTube or wherever quality podcasts are heard. Guys, one more time, thank you very, very much for joining us. I had a blast listening to this. I had an even greater blast where I got to sit back and let you guys interview yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, well, shoot dang, thanks for having me. <laughs> and, of course, one of my favorite things that I got to do was to have you both uh, be put on the spot to voice act for me about a spilt beer. So, <laughs> Guys, we will, catch you. we will catch you on the next Breaking the Fourth Wall. Make sure you're jumping on to Twitch, YouTube, or wherever quality, uh, podcasts can be heard. Checking out Shattered Dungeon as well as tomorrow getting a chance to see the se uh, hear the season finale of Chronicles of the Lost Realm. Have a good night, guys. Thanks. And for everyone still watching, we're going to raid our own Jade Crab.